Welcome, Forecast, episode number three. I know what you're thinking. I'm not wearing a suit. There are two reasons. Reason number one is the 90 degree rule, which is I don't wear suits over 90 degrees. You'd be absolutely insane to wear a suit over 90 degrees. All I need to be doing is sweating through not only my shirt, but my suit. Uh, and it is just too hot in New York City. The other reason is I am moving tomorrow and I've packed all of my suits. I actually had to rip this shirt out of a box somewhere this morning because I thought I was moving today. It got delayed a day. I am moving tomorrow. Um, and so this is what you get. You get Hawaiian James. This is like a throwback to when we were doing in Florida and I had two shirts for uh, two months that I was down there. But Lots to get through today, so I'm gonna dive right into it. We're back to the old format of questions. Caveat before we start, please send questions in, comment on our YouTube, send us a DM, send Marnie a message, marnie at four.co. However you wanna get the messages in, please send questions, they're so helpful. So let's get into it. Question number one is, what advice would you give to micro-influencers that are still trying to strike deals considering companies will be clinging to major players more than ever after and during this time. I think what's good to first talk about is how unlikely it is for a brand to reach out to work with you, right? Let's assume, so there's a, let's not assume, there's a billion users on Instagram, right? Growing every day, so there's probably quite a few more than that, but let's use a billion because that's the only math I can do. Let's assume that as an influencer, you know, if you've got a following of over five or 10,000 followers, let's assume you're, you're in the top 1% of Instagram followers. I think that's probably safe to say. That means there are 10 million people who have as many followers or more followers than you, okay? So 10 million people is uh, about the population of New York City. I think the city of Manhattan is 8 million. I think New York City is 13 million people. So, Give or take, let's say, the population of New York City, right? Now, a brand has to find you in that mix of 10 million people. Somehow, that brand has to find your, your profile randomly, right? Like the social media person, the marketing person is just on Instagram and they have to find you, assuming they, or they already don't follow you, okay? So, so then they find you right? And then they, they maybe look at your feed and they have to think, oh, I, I want to work with this person, right? And then let's assume at the time they don't have an opportunity, but they do two months later. So then two months later, they have to somehow remember that you exist, go back to your account, find your contact information. You probably don't have your email sitting right there. So find your contact information, email you and say, we have an opportunity and offer that to you. That is a huge amount of steps. And if you were sitting back leaving this stuff to chance, I gotta be honest, it's gonna not happen more often than it does, you know? And so every step of that way, you have to think, how can I improve my chances of getting this deal? One, discovery, right? You're on four, that helps. Brands use four every day to find influencers. There's a hundred competitors that are shittier than us, but copied us. Uh, you can join their platforms as well, that helps. But how are they going to find you? You know, you got to think about every week I would sit down and I'd say, what am I going to do today to make sure that more brands find out who I am? What am I doing? How am I going to make that happen? Right? And every week you should have a couple things that you are doing explicitly to try and make sure that more brands find out who you are. Right? That could be trying to get press. That could be, um, you know, creating posts that you hope can go viral. That would, could be posting about brands uh, and tagging them. That could be doing a collaboration with an influencer with a, you know, a wider reach or an influencer of similar following to get some exposure. What are you doing to get yourself in front of potential brands, right? Then, okay, once they've landed on your page, what are you doing to make sure that they see an opportunity to work with you? right? Is your feed set up in a way where a brand says, I can see myself here. This is somebody I want to work with, right? Um, what can you do to optimize that, right? And then making it really easy to reach out to you, right? Put your email there. Uh, you know, if, 
I, you know, if you have an agent, I know a lot of people put their agent's name there. I'm personally a lot less likely to reach out, I would think, to the agent because I want to I wanna reach out to you first. Uh, in general, I think unless you're a massive influencer, the email should go to you and if you have an agent, kick it to your agent. But like, it's pretty rude, I think, and, and to start a relationship with saying, hey, I might want to work with you, but it's not even worth my fucking time to take your email. I'm not even going to answer your email and say, this sounds so excited, looping in, you know, looping in Adriana from the team who's going to help you know, work this out, right? Email should go to you first unless you are massive, I'd say over half a million followers, okay? Even then, I'd say it's good business for the email to go to you. There are hundreds of examples of Steve Jobs answering his personal emails from random people who sent him emails, right? If Jobs can answer an email, I think you probably can find the time to do the same, okay? But then let's step back, right? And say, well, what if, you know, what if you weren't sitting back and waiting for this to happen and you were gonna be more proactive, right? I talked about like, what are you doing this week to make sure more brands see you? But even more like, how can you be more explicit? What am I gonna do to, to force brands to see me, right? Again, one is, is posting about them, find, then finding their email addresses and emailing them the post, right? But there are other ways to do that. You're sending pitches, you're getting introductions from friends. You know, you see an influencer do a, a collaboration with a brand you like, you have a relationship with them, reach out and say, hey, could you intro to them to me? I'll give you a list of my brand contacts and if you don't have an intro, I'll intro you. Just swap contacts, you know? Even if the influencer isn't open to introing you, they could give you the email and you could, again, you could swap contacts. You could say, hey, I got your email from a friend. Just wanted to say, I've always wanted to work with you. Here's the five times I've posted about you. I'd love to work together. You have to get proactive. 10 million people are in the top 1% of Instagram's following. And, and I'm just making that up. I'm not sure actually what the top 1% is, but I'm assuming it's around 10,000 followers. Um, 10 million people. One in 10 million is the chance that a brand finds you and wants to work with you. You have to increase those odds. You have to be working every day to increase those odds if you want to get more deals. And for bigger influencers, those odds are increased as your following grows, right? It just gets easier. And so you have to work that much harder when you don't have a big following. Question number two, can you give us an update on TikTok? Where is the platform going? Is Four doing any TikTok campaigns? Do you think it'll be banned in the USA? This is actually four questions, but we'll take them really quickly. Let's start with the last one. Do I think it'll get banned in the US? No, I don't. I think it's a little bit of political theater. I think obviously Trump has a, uh, you know, is picking a fight with the Chinese in general. Um, and I think that it's a really sensational thing to say uh, that gets people really riled up. And I think that the idea of Chinese, the Chinese Communist Party spying on people through apps is one that a lot of people believe probably happens. Um, Rightly so, you know, I think the Chinese government, much like the American government, does a lot of things to make spying easier. Uh, something that China does that is right out of the American playbook is they go to developing countries and say, hey, we'll build te a telecommunications infrastructure for you for free. We just want to give it to you. Okay, well, then we'll own it, obviously, and we'll, we'll spy on you and listen to everything you say. And, um, but we'll just give that to you. We did that for years. We continue to do that. China does that. So it makes sense uh, that people believe that there is something nefarious happening with TikTok. I don't really think there is. I think Mark Zuckerberg is also testifying today in front of Congress, and his story is going to be that Facebook is a product of American innovation, and TikTok is, you know, this Chinese app that's trying to take them down and, and infiltrate the U.S. And, and do that through the youth of America. It's a, it's a convenient case for him to make as they launch Reels. Obviously, um, Facebook's been pretty good to Trump, honestly. They've treated him fairly well. Um, I could almost see Trump banning, if he's even able to legally do it, I could see him banning TikTok just as a fuck you, just for fun, because I honestly don't think he has a lot of 
thought to the things he does. I just think he does them. Um, and I think that that would be really good for, you know, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook and Instagram Reels. And so, you know, I, I, I would put the chance at, at one to two, two percent that this happens. But, but if we've learned anything in the last four years and certainly in the last six months, literally anything's fucking possible. So it is possible. But let's talk about what's going on with TikTok, right? I know we've talked a bit about TikTok before. Four is actively doing TikTok campaigns all the time, especially in beauty. It's perfect for beauty. Uh, as far as our clients are concerned, it makes a lot of sense there. Um, TikToks, let's talk about TikTok strategy though, right? The reason Snapchat failed, in my opinion, my humble opinion, uh, is that when Instagram stories came out, there was nothing to keep people in Snapchat, right? Instagram copied Snapchat's functionality, essentially uh, verbatim, uh, and there was, no, there was nothing to keep you in Snapchat. Why? Well, they wouldn't tell you how many followers you had, and they didn't help creators grow at all. There was no discover, there was no virality. You, know, you couldn't even follow someone unless you typed their username in exactly. It was fucking lunacy, honestly. And it made it really hard to grow following. And if you did grow following, you couldn't even know how many followers you had, right? So when Instagram stories came out and you have 100K on Instagram stories and you say, or on Instagram, and you say, well, I don't even know how many Snapchat followers I have, so fuck Snapchat, I'm gonna go to Instagram, right? So I think what TikTok did in realizing that was they knew Instagram was gonna copy TikTok, TikTok obviously. Um, so how do you keep people on this new app if they've spent years building a following on another app? How do you do that? You make it easier to build a following on the new app. You make it so when Instagram copies you, let's say you get two years, right? Um, which is about how much time they've had. So you get two years. So in that two years, if you can help people build up big enough followings to not abandon TikTok, you might have a chance of competing. And so I'm not surprised when people are like, I've gained as many TikTok followers in three weeks as I did in three years on Instagram, right? Uh, we talked to an influencer before on, on, on you know, DWJ, RIP. Um, and she was like, yeah, I've been on Instagram for six years. And she got, again, more Instagram followers in a month than she had gotten in six years on Instagram, right? Now, when Reels comes out, those, those people aren't going to jump to Reels. They'll do Reels as well. But now their following is bigger on TikTok, right? And so that is the genius of building this virality monster that makes it so that every week you're hearing about somebody who had no following and a week later had 100,000 followers, right? Because you think next could be me. But my mom has videos that have over a million views, right? And she's like, I don't know, these videos are stupid. I don't know why this happened, but like why it happened is it's a feature. A feature of TikTok is making sure almost everyone who publishes there consistently can get a little slice of fame. Now, what we don't know is that, is that real? You know, are those views real? Are those followers real? You know, that's something they haven't been really upfront about. Uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember when Facebook video was outperforming YouTube by 10, 15, 20, 50 X on views. And then a year later it came out, oh, actually Facebook is counting a view if the video loads, not even if you watch a second of it, if the fucking video loads. YouTube, you have to watch 30 seconds or 15% of the video or something, right? So it was, it was, a, it was a fantasy, you know? It was bullshit. And it ruined a lot of businesses, MIC. Um, a lot of, you know, tech companies, like news companies that pivoted to video um, got burned because Facebook was inflating their numbers to try and pull people away from YouTube and it fucking worked, right? And so part of me, the cynical part of me thinks that's what's happening with TikTok, right? That they are inflating these numbers um, or certainly massaging them a little bit so that when Reels comes, which it's coming really soon, um, people are gonna be less likely to drop TikTok and go over to Instagram. And I think it will probably work, honestly.
Last question. Less than 100 days from the election. I haven't done much political posting before. I'm worried about losing followers. Would I advise getting started if I'm interested? And if so, how? Um, so. The last four months has changed the world, obviously, and uh, more specifically in our world, it's changed social media, right? And I think it is, it is no longer okay to not speak out about these issues, to not let your followers know where you stand, right? And silence is, you know, if you went to the marches at all, um, you saw a lot of signs that said silence is violence, right? That like not speaking is complicit, right? And that, and that has poured into social in a way that, that traditionally has not been the case. And I think that if you are an influencer right now at the platform who wants to talk about politics and you're afraid to because you don't want to lose followers, I cannot urge you enough cannot urge you sh strongly enough to scratch that itch and to start posting about politics and what you believe in. Because the time for silence is, is long past. And we have seen before large, you know, big macro influencers who haven't spoken out getting called out for not speaking out, right? Um, and beyond just protecting yourself and protecting your brand, we're, we're living, this is living history. You know, you have to have a sense of living history and, and of, of how the moment that you are in is going to be perceived in 50 years. My niece is 14 years old and lives in New York City. And I called her up when the protests started and I said, we're going to go out and protest together uh, tomorrow. Uh, I called her parents first, obviously. Um, but we're going out tomorrow because, you know, if you have children one day, they will learn about this week in school and they will ask you what you did because they'll know you lived in New York. You know, and, and, and you have to be a part of it. You know, and you have to be on the right side of history. And it's understandable if you don't generally talk about politics, if you're not interested in politics, to, to feel like you don't know how to talk about politics. But I think one of the great trends to come out of the last few months, uh, especially surrounding race and racism in America, is all of these incredible posts from black creators that are being shared, that are going viral, right? And so if you just open your eyes and open your platform and follow different voices with you know, opinions that you hadn't heard before and you digest those. And if they change your perspective, if they make you see the world in a different way, if they teach you something, you just share them. You don't have to comment on it. You don't have to you know, synthesize what this person said and say it in your own words. You can just hit the little mail button or paper airplane, I don't know what it is, and share it in your stories, right? And you can literally, if you say anything, just say, hey, I learned something from this, I hope you do too, right? Um, and that's doing enough. You know, you don't have to, not everybody has to be an activist. You know, that's something Brittany said on the last show. Not everyone has to be an activist, right? But, but you have to be on the right side of history. And if you saw something and you learned something from it, then why wouldn't you share that with your audience? And I will say that if you're worried about losing followers or brand deals because you're, you are talking about politics, I would say you're more likely to lose brand deals or followers not talking about it at this point, you know? Um, unless you are like a crazy right-wing Republican, um, in which case, you know, God help you. But also, uh, probably best not to um, you know, spread those views around if you want to continue working with brands. But, but for most of us um, who are not uh, right-wing Republicans, um, this, is, you know, this is the time to speak up. This is the time to share. 
Um, and this is the time to uh, you know, keep talking about these issues so they don't fade into the background. And I think if you want to have a career in this space as a public figure, that is an absolute requirement for that career at this point. With that, the show is over. Episode three, done. See you guys next week. <laughs>